So that breaking news, an atmospheric river just unloading on the central coast. And these pictures giving you an idea of the impact. Intense rain, strong winds have brought swelling rivers, flooding road damage, flooding road damage, power outages, and of course evacuations. We're going to start Monterey County. Take a look at the evacuation map right now. Areas in yellow are evacuation warnings. That means they want people to be ready to leave at a moment's notice if it becomes necessary. Evacuation orders more serious. Those are in red. That means they want people to leave now. Warnings are in place around the Salinas River in South Monterey County and around the Carmel River. Orders also in place around the Pajaro River south of Watsonville. Santa Cruz County evacuation orders are in place around Watsonville. The areas most impacted are around Salsipuitis Creek, which feeds into the Pajaro River. There are also evacuation warnings around Highway 129. San Benito County, areas south of San Felipe Lake are under evacuation orders. Roads closed include Lover's Lane and Fraser Lake Road. These areas have been prone to flooding in the past. We have live team coverage on the impacts of the storm across the central coast. Our chief meteorologist Lee Solomon keeping a close eye on river levels as well as what comes next. Action News 8 reporter Brisa Colon is on the Monterey Peninsula taking a look at widespread power outages. Christian Valderas, a closer look at how the Santa Cruz Mountains were impacted. And Felix Cortez is in Soquel, where a community has been split in half. The only road in and out washed out. So let's start there. Action News 8 reporter Felix Cortez live alongside that washed out road in Soquel. Felix? Well, Aaron, emergency crews working desperately to try to at least get one lane of this two lane road opened as soon as possible. As you can see behind me, continues to be done. This road is completely washed out and that's impacting roughly 450 homes up the road from here that have no way in or out. Now this is Main Street here in SoCal. It was washed out early this morning after the culvert beneath the road gave out. Emergency repairs now a priority as crews have brought in heavy equipment to get part of the road reopened. Large boulders are being dumped in the creek in an effort to do a backfill. Neighbors woke up to the sound of emergency crews only to see the road had been washed out. Wild. Yeah, the, the guys are just like, there's no road there. There's not any, you know, I can't pass it. And uh, I was like, what are you going to do? And they're like, I, you know, nobody really had, had a plan, but um, luckily somebody didn't drive into it. Get a temporary road on top of that. It will probably be one lane. Uh, we are not sure if this is going to work yet. We have some backup plans, including a possible uh, temporary bridge if that doesn't work. It's amazing. That road, that, that road is insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the rain came down. Now, in a sign, this community is coming together to help each other. One neighbor is allowing those on the other side of this wash to walk through his property to get access to a footbridge so they can get to town if need be on foot. At least as for wind crews might be able to get at least one lane of this road we open. County uh, spokesperson says it could be as early as tomorrow morning. Reporting from SoCal, I'm Felix Cortez. Aaron, back to you in the studio. All right, Felix, thank you. Impressive work if they get that road reopened at least one lane by tomorrow. Meantime, Governor Newsom's request for a presidential emergency declaration to support storm response has been approved by President Biden. This means California can now receive federal assistance as it deals with the impacts of these recent storms. So far, 34 counties are under a state of emergency for relief efforts, and that does include Santa Cruz and Monterey counties. California National Guard is coming to Santa Cruz County. They'll be supporting the Office of Emergency Services and local first responders as they deal with the aftermath of these recent storms. Troops and equipment are being sent throughout the state of California. Now turning to our chief meteorologist, Lee Solomon, is going to take a look at the river levels. Initially, we're always worried about the smaller rivers. Then we would turn our attention to the larger rivers. There may be some problems there, but I, 
I feel like we this could have been worse. It could have been worse. You know, when we talk about these atmospheric river type storms, which are basically winter storms with an extra slug of moisture, that's the atmospheric river part, we rate them. We've been starting to do that. Uh, and this one was moderate. Part of the rating is how much moisture is actually in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. We can measure that. And the other part is how long it's predicted to stay over. And that's you would key, point at. right? And that's key because like the San Lorenzo, they had rain, you know, heavy, and I won't get into the technical aspects of it for about six, seven, eight hours, which is, you know, that's solid. And we did have a flood. But had it stayed over for nine to 12 hours, and we've seen this before, especially up in Napa and up on the Russian River, 12, 18, 24 hours. So instead of five inches of rain in a day, you get 10 or 12 or 15. And that, I mean, when you're at flood stage, people say, well, it's just a little bit more rain. Well, when you're over the banks and you add another five inches uh, in 12 hours, it's a whole different story. So Aaron, you're right in, in some aspects. We were hoping that cold front would push through and it did, uh, which was great. We were talking about that last night. So all of this heavy rain was coming in, but a cold front was also starting to push it to the south. So that took the heaviest of the rains out of here uh, between about four and five in the morning. Uh, so we were done with that. We've had a few showers since then and the main batch now in Southern California. So let's take a look at Pacheco Creek near Dunville. We've peaked and we're coming down, but we're still in moderate flood state. So of course there's still a lot of water out there and that'll take a while. So give that about another 12 hours or so. We'll see improving conditions out there. And then we'll take a look at the Salinas River out towards Spreckles. So here's where we are right now at about 17 feet. Uh, we are under even action stage, but with all of the tributaries and all of the rain in the mountains coming down, we're expected to go from minor to moderate and maybe get close to major flood stage here on the Salinas, but this is days out still. We're talking sometime probably on Sunday or Monday, so you've got a few days to prepare for that. We'll keep monitoring uh, the Salinas River until then. We are not expected to get a lot of rain from now until then, but there's been a but every time this winter. There is another storm on the charts. We'll talk about when that arrives, how powerful it could be, and more impacts across the Central Coast. The window has not closed, as you no, like to say. No, the storm door is open for sure. All right, thank you, Lee. Now we want to go up to the Santa Cruz Mountains. Uh, Action News 8 reporter Christian Balderas is live in Felton for us right now. So, Christian, how do things look up there? Well, Aaron, fortunately, there was no flooding up here in Felton, specifically Felton Grove on this strip of neighborhood, neighborhood. But really, the aftermath is muddy. If you just take a look at the ground over here near my boots, there's a huge pile of mud. Now, they have cleared it from the road for the most part, but many people here uh, still dealing with a lot of damage, a lot of uh, dirtiness, really. But people are prepared as much as they can. You can take a look behind me that they put their yard, their garbage, and their recycling bins up on the roof just in case that they want to wash away. Now that's the case for a lot of people preparing in case things take a turn for the worse. Now there were evacuation orders in place here in Felton early early this morning, but they were lifted later by about 10 a.m. Now something residents who live in Felton Grove are really used to. Now the main concern really in this neighborhood is the San Lorenzo River. Those orders again were lifted this morning and slowly some people did trickle back to their homes. But according to one resident, Two people have moved permanently from this strip here in Felton Grove. Now, one home was yellow tagged for restricted access. People who live here tell me they're always prepared, but they're tired. Some who have lived here through not just these storms, but also severe flooding in 2017 and the CZU fire in 2020. The thought to unplug and relax is a really lovely thought, but for those of us who have been through the trauma of three natural disasters in four or five years, it's sort of impossible to unplug and not watch the water levels. And Today I traveled from Felton to Ben Loman, Boulder Creek and Lompico. People say last night's storm was not as bad compared to January's storm, but we did still have some slides and down trees near Zianti Road. Uh, that's causing a traffic jam over near Lompico, forcing vehicles onto a private road. That's still damaged by January storms. Now, the overall sentiment again is that people are fatigued. And while there is still more rain on its way, people say that they're hopeful that it won't be bad this time around. Aaron, back to you. A lot of anxiety in the Santa Cruz Mountains for sure. Uh, all right, thank you, Christian. This latest storm came with intense winds, taking down trees and power poles, leading to widespread power outages that are persisting tonight. This is PG&E's power outages map. As you can see, that's Monterey Peninsula.
thousands are without power. You can see um, that most of the problems, at least right now, are concentrated on the peninsula. Action News 8 reporter Brisa Colon is live in Monterey with an update on those outages as well as damage across the peninsula and, well, possibly some news, Brisa, on when the lights may be back on. Aaron, the city of Monterey reached level one stage of emergency response with winds causing extensive damage, trees to come down, and as you mentioned, power outages. I'm here off of Del Monte Avenue where the road remains closed because PG&E and crews are out here working to try and restore power. Major power outages across the peninsula causing street lights to go out, backing up cars and causing a headache for drivers. This is the scene out on Del Monte Avenue between Casa Verde Way and Slow Avenue. PG&E crews out working to fix the major cause of the outages, the main transmission system that was compromised by downed trees. PG&E telling KSBW they have brought in additional teams today to total 70 teams and they estimate about 64 different outage locations across the entire peninsula. Another tragic incident, this home in Pacific Grove, where a tree fell on a on various properties. Officials reporting a firefighter while responding also had a tree fall on him. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to be OK. What's so interesting about this storm is that the damage is not isolated to one location. It's spread out and it's causing multiple issues for our crews because it's one power line down. And then just a few feet down, there's power lines that are down and other electric parts that broke. So it's all hands on deck and it's a massive effort to be able to restore power to our customers here in Monterey County as quickly as possible. Local and regional fire departments coming together to create a task force of seven uh, engines responding to any emergencies. Effects seen at stores as well. Many store closures turning shoppers away today. Local message to people living here on the peninsula. If you don't have to drive, don't go out and drive. And as for power to come back on, pg &E is saying sometime tonight, as early as tonight or even tomorrow evening. Reporting in Monterey, I'm Brisa Colon, KSPW, Action News 8. I guess the basic message is be patient. It's going to take a while. According to a pg &E spokesperson, many customers on the peninsula will have their power restored by 10 o'clock tonight. That is many, but not all. In San Benito County, they are dealing with a lot of flooding. Check this out. San Juan Batista neighborhood near 156 and Alameda Road. So there's also flooding on San Felipe Road and flooding on Lover's Lane. And at least one person turned around to avoid getting stuck. They did the right thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit uh, deeper than I anticipated. Uh, it's, it's sitting about 20 inches right now. It's at the bottom of our door, so, I mean, and we're about two feet off the ground, so it's, it's real close, yeah. So we just didn't want to chance it, you know, right now. No reason to right now. County officials are really advising people to pay attention to road closures and to not drive through flooded waters. More often than not, you will get stuck. It can also be incredibly dangerous. They want to remind people to turn around, don't drown.